This is incredibly enlightening, I should say, review. Uh, basically, the studies that were utilized in order to make vitamin C recommendations. In this case, it is in regard to the World Health Organization being kind of behind the times in reference to updating itself on scientific literature. Now, I want to take you an excerpt from the actual analysis of the study itself, just so you get an idea of how important vitamin C is for certain elements such as skin health or anything else revolving around collagen. We're going to look at it from a little different slant today as opposed to the immunological properties of vitamin C. We're just looking basically for vitamin C in reference to such things as wound healing. To proceed as follows. Study found that recovery from vitamin C deficiency takes a long time. It requires higher levels of vitamin C, even an average daily dose of 90 milligrams a day for six months fail to restore normal scar strength for depleted study participants. Part of the takeaway here is don't become deficient in vitamin C. It takes a long time to build those levels back up in a way the body can actually utilize. Blood levels are one thing. How the body incorporates it on a cellular level, cellular level may be a totally new take. But the backstory, why vitamin C in reference to collagen for those not familiar. Vitamin C is an important element in your body's ability to heal wounds because the creation of scar tissue depends on the collagen protein. And the production of collagen depends on vitamin C. In addition to knitting skin back together, collagen maintains the integrity of blood vessels, thus protecting stroke and heart disease. Now, we're going to get into the public release, and I'm going to show you the abstract title as well. Now, this is really a critical assessment of the World Health Organization in regard to its nutritional information that is propagating upon the global population, meaning the researchers saying, get with the times. But to proceed, new analysis of landmark scurvy study leads to an update on vitamin C needs. Review. Of a landmark 1944 study on adequate vitamin C level leads researchers to challenge the World Health Organization's recommended daily amounts. Now, I want to show you the abstract title just briefly so you get an idea why I kind of like this title a little bit better than the first one because it gives us more delves into exactly what the study is really about is basically emphasizing the importance of vitamin C in regard to collagen, connected tissue wound healing, so on and so forth. Vitamin C and scar strength, analysis of a historical trial and implications for collagen related pathologies. That's the abstract. But now, what data is the World Health Organization utilizing and why is the World Health Organization utilizing the vitamin C recommendations it currently is today in 2021? Well, for that, we have to go back to 1944. The last time the World Health Organization utilized information to update its data in regard to vitamin C intake. To proceed as follows, now it's story time. In one experiment, it's called the Sorby Research Institute in Sheffield, called the Shipwreck Experiment. Volunteers were fed only what Navy carried in lifeboats, the Navy. The grueling experiment resulted in more water and less food being carried in lifeboats. One of the more robust experiments run on human subjects during this time in England which has had a long-lasting public health consequences, has had long-lasting public health consequences, was a vitamin C depletion study started in 1944, also at Sorby. This medical experiment involved 20 subjects, most of whom were conscientious objectors living in the building where many experiments, including the shipwreck experiment, were conducted. They were overseen by a future Nobel Prize winner, and detailed data was kept on each participant in the study. The vitamin C experiment is a shocking study. According to the researcher, the new study on the sorby vitamin C experiment, they depleted people's vitamin C levels long term and created life threatening emergencies, which obviously, quote unquote, from the researcher, it would never fly now. The goal of the sorby investigators was not to determine the required vitamin C intake for optimal health. It was to find the minimum vitamin C requirements for preventing scurvy. Nothing else, nothing more. Yet, an entire population is still working off of data from 1944, which basically generally yielded to doing nothing more than looking at ways to prevent scurvy. 
And vitamin C obviously does so much more because you always have that argument, the minimum requirement and the optimal levels to proceed as follows. Experimental wounds were made during this depletion and repletion. The investigators used that scar strength experiment wounds as a measure of adequate vitamin C levels since of poor wound healing from the vitamin C. But to proceed to the point which actually matters here, robust parametric analysis of the Sorby trial data revealed that the average daily vitamin C intake of 95 milligrams is required to prevent weak scar strength for 97.5% of the population. Such a vitamin C intake is more than double, double. The daily 45 milligrams of vitamin C intake recommended by the World Health Organization, but is consistent with the writing panels for the National Academy of Medicine and other countries they add. So basically what they're trying to imply is to the World Health Organization or any other medical professional is don't solely reply on the reply. Well, that's what they're doing. Rely on the World Health Organization for generally it's now it sounds kind of intuitive in today's time and so on and so forth. Just don't rely on the World Health Organization solely for your health advice. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go more towards the abstract. Again, it's more like story time, so I'm going to narrate through. But however, though, the, the abstract is so direct in the results of the trials themselves, nothing needs to be added to it or narrated or, you know, descriptive terminology, so on and so forth as I currently am doing now. But to proceed as follows. All right, the world, again, they are again addressing the World Health Organization. So please keep that in mind. You're gonna hear that a couple of times. The World Health Organization relies on this narrative to set the recommended nutrient intake for vitamin C. This narrative, however, is based on what is known as the eyeball method of data assessment. Yeah, builds your confidence, doesn't it? The 1944 trial published individual participant data on scar strength provided an opportunity to statistically probe the validity of the 10 milligram narrative, something which has not yet been done. The findings show that a vitamin C intake that averages 10 milligrams a day over a mean follows up of 11 and a half months was associated with a 42% weakened scar strength when compared with 80 milligram of vitamin C intake. So basically what they did is, all right, this is how much required to prevent sc scurvy, you got it. Wound health, wound healing, mm, not so much to proceed. The observed dose response curve between scar strength and vitamin C intake suggests that the daily vitamin C intake needed to prevent collagen related pathologies is in the range recommended by the National Academy and European Food Safety Authority to be between 75 and 110 milligrams a day. Not, not the World Health Organization 45 milligrams a day. Again, why they haven't updated their data? I don't know. The findings also show that a vitamin C intake that averages 65 milligrams a day over a mean follow-up of six and a half months failed to restore the normal wound healing capacity of vitamin C depleted tissues. Such tissues had 49% weaker scar strength when compared to non-depleted tissues. Thus, average daily vitamin C intakes were approximately 50% or higher than the World Health Organization recommends may fail to treat Existing collagen-related pathologies, it is concluded that the prior lack of statistical analysis of a landmark trial, i.e. eyeball, may have led to misleading, now it's interesting, a lot of the people have basically been posting medical information, uh, especially researchers and medical, other medical professionals, sometimes get hit this misleading health claim and so on and so forth. Yet, ironically, here is the, here's the twist. It's the World Health Organization which is misleading. To proceed. It concluded, thus the average of approximately 40 percent concludes that the World Health Organization may fail to treat existing collagen-related pathologies. To repeat, it is concluded that the prior lack of statistical analysis of a landmark trial may have led to a misleading, or they could say sloppy, if you want to be kind of kind, narrative on the vitamin C needs for the prevention and treatment of collagen-related related, related pathologies. So, the takeaway, once again, if your concern is wound healing, arterial health, heart health, so on and so forth, even for example, skin health, wrinkle prevention, so on and so forth, um, or not being prone to wrinkles, I should say, especially a lot of people wearing a lot of face masks or surgical masks these days, uh, the lines around the mouth tend to be more predominant. 
then vitamin C is something that you should really research uh, with your medical professional uh, in order to basically help maintain a healthy, without being, <laughs> no pun intended, a healthy outlook, or, out, or I should say appearance per se, in reference to skin health, wounds, healing, and so on and so forth. But again, the main aspect here is don't become deficient in vitamin C. Second main aspect is don't necessarily rely upon one uh, health authority for all of your health inf information, including myself. Question, doubt, review, research, and then we can share information and become more enlightened together. Again, Rafter Channel signing off. Gratitude to the researchers for actually stepping forward and pointing this out in reference to basically inadequate recommendations in regard to vitamin C intake on a daily level on a global scale, especially with the elevated uh, predominance of certain particular organizations during this time. They should be held to a little bit higher standard and gratitude. And as always, I am humble for you watching and basically look at the vitamin C, look at the vitamin C intake. I know a lot of our viewers can take a little bit more, including myself, but don't get yourself behind the eight ball in reference to basically become deficient in vitamin C, especially since a lot of the individuals when trying to boost those levels up once deficient, six months, six and a half months. Yeah, those are hard figures to digest. Again, Ralph signing off. Gratitude and thank you. And see y'all next time. The long goodbye. Catch you next time. Bye.